Sorry. Okay, we're restarting. Welcome to day two of our Bugs Life program this week. We're doing all sorts of fun bug science, and I'm so excited that you guys are here to join us. If you are new, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, and you can get all of our downloads and the supply list and all that good stuff um, over at patreon.com slash Research. And today we are going into the world of bees. Bees are super important. They are really big pollinators and we're going to learn about why they're important, why pollination is important, and some really amazing mind-blowing facts about bees today as we create some beehives out of books. So I will get to our shout outs in just a moment. If you want a shout out, make sure you type your name in the comments box, either in Zoom or in YouTube. Evan is monitoring those for us. And I am gonna let you guys know what we need today. So the first thing we need is a book. I have this fantastic book by a local author, Lynn Brunell. This book is made to be turned into a beehive. How cool is that? So if you have a book, or you wanna do this, this book is amazing. It's got all these fun little experiments and lots of knowledge about it, about bees. So if you find out you really like making this beehive and you wanna do some more stuff with bees, this is a great book to check out. And it's super colorful, it's really cute, amazing. If you don't have a book that says, turn this book into a beehive, that's okay. You can turn any book into a beehive, not just this one. So you're gonna to wanna to grab some other book that you're not reading that you've already read. Maybe if you have like love all of the books in your house, you could grab like the Parks and Rec catalog out of the trash or like a phone book. Any of those types of things will work. We basically need paper to be honest. So even if you don't want to get rid of a book, you could just use some paper. Um, if you have this book, really all you need is the book and some tape. If you don't, you're going to need either paper or whatever book you're going to recycle and some tape. And you're gonna want something that will be the outer shell of your beehive. So this book has this awesome dust jacket cover. And again, if you have another book that has a dust jacket cover, you can use that. But it sort of goes like this, and this will be the sort of outside of our beehive. Whereas if you don't have that, totally fine. You could use like a plastic bottle. You could use like a really large tin can because we're gonna want it to be about six inches. So you'll need some sort of recycled plastic bottle or can for that. And then um, if you do, you're gonna need some parental help to cut it so that we can get it ready. And then I just have an array of pencils and pens to wrap our paper around and it'll give us different sizes, which is really important. And some string for when you string it up. And that's all we need today. Super simple, but really impactful. Um, so let's get started on making our beehives. If you have the book, you're just going to take a pause for a moment while we talk about using the other option. So if you have like a plastic bottle, or you've got some sort of a recycled item that's going to be what you're using as the outside of your beehive. Welcome, Georgia. What you're gonna do with parent help is you're going to sort of maybe draw a line. I think I'm gonna actually use this top line here. And you're gonna cut it off. And what this is gonna do is it gives the outside of the home a really happy space so that other things can't get in. Because while we make the beehive, we want it to be for bees. We don't want it to be for pests that like to eat bees as a snack. So we're gonna make sure that we have a back to it and the sides sort of just help it all stay cozy and secure and a little bit safer. So with the help of a parent, you would just cut off the top and then you are ready to go. Maybe you could use the other part as a funnel sometimes. You're gonna to wanna to wash this and dry it out really, really well before you use it. In fact, maybe that's something that Georgia could do for me. It could be funnel. And one thing to note is when we roll our paper, it, it could be a tunnel. When we roll our paper up, so let's say it's like a massive bee thing, when we cut it, oh, I might cut it a little bit short, um, you actually kind of want it to be inset a little bit. So we might, you could cut your paper down if you wanted to at the very end, but we are going to do something else with our paper. So the big things you want is something that goes all the way around and a back end to it so that those little guys who love bees to eat as a snack or like bee larvae as a snack can't get in from the back. So they only have to, can go through the front. So that's really important. 
If you have a book cover, all we're gonna do with the book cover is we're gonna like do it like this and then we're gonna fill this up with our little beehive pieces. All right, question. Uh, do you think a coconut milk can is big enough? It's like a can, like a... I mean, I don't know if it'll be long enough, but you could try it and see. Or what you could do is you could do the coconut as the back and then you can maybe even put like an extra piece around it later. So that your like beehive pieces might stick out, which we don't really want, but then you could cover those with another piece of something. That would be a good solution to that. Yeah, so if you're struggling for materials, make do and then adapt. Yeah, exactly. All right, so the other thing we need is paper. And this is pretty a simple little project, but it takes a lot of time. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do it so we can all start working on it. And I'm gonna tell you some really cool facts and things about bees. So what you have to do, take a pencil, or a marker, you want them to be different sizes. You don't want them all to be the exact same, and we'll talk about why in a minute. Um, but just things with like different, slightly different diameters. So the diameter is how sort of wide it is this way. So I've got like a pencil, which is a kind of a skinny diameter, and I've got this um, Sharpie marker, which is a little bit larger. This one will be a pretty big diameter, and that'll be fine. And we're gonna do what we did in our Space Week when we made rockets. So if you were with our Space Week, you'll know what to do. We're just gonna roll it. And you can roll it so that there's a ton of rolls in your sheet, that's totally fine. Or if you want, after a few rolls, you can cut your paper if you're feeling like you don't have too much paper, that's fine too. But you're gonna just roll it up just like we rolled those awesome um, rockets. rockets, thank you. And then when it's rolled up, we're gonna tape it. So we're gonna tape it up, whoop, just like this. And you'll notice one piece of tape pretty much does it for me. Now the last thing I need to do is we talked about those predators that really like to chomp on bee larvae. It's like they're little cookies and they're like, mmm, delicious. We don't want them to get in. So we have the back to whatever you're going to use as your house for the bees, but we're also gonna create a back into this part and all you have to do you could either fold it over you could twist it like we twisted with the um with the rockets why can i not remember that we made rockets i'm having a hard time with that um so either either way that you want to do and then you can just tape that in place so it's really hard now for anything to get in from the back and that will be the very back so that would be like up against your plastic backing or this beehive book, it actually has like a little backing that we'll cut out and put in. So now we're gonna make a whole bunch of these. Big ones, little ones, um, just a whole bunch of them. And then you're gonna like maybe just put them off to the side as you make them. Don't forget, we do want to put that little back on so you can just fold over one end and then tape that one end down. All right, Orion would like to know how tight we roll it. Um, you, you want to be able to get your pencil or your marker out, but it doesn't have to be like so tight. You can make them bigger or smaller. So you'll notice that when we sort of tape it, it sort of all goes up to whatever that tape spot is. And that's totally fine. You do want some littler ones because some bees like littler things. Um, and that's sort of all. Yeah, Ryan, you can't really do it wrong. I mean, we're just rolling. So. As we all roll, because we're gonna keep doing this for a while, we gotta fill up our whole container with rolls. So we gotta roll a lot. And that's okay, because we can learn about bees. So I have some cool facts for you guys about bees. Some of them are gonna be mind blowing. Who's ready to be shocked? All right, so first let's just do some interesting facts. Like in North America, there are 4,000 different types of bees. That's a lot of bees. Now some bees are social and some bees are solitary. So like a social bee, they're not like going out to like go have a party at their friend's house. A social bee works with each other. So they have jobs and some bees are protectors of the hive. Some bees help feed the young. Some bees go out into the world and make honey. Honey bees are social bees. Um, and some bees are solitary bees. And those bees, they kind of hang out on their own. So they, don't have jobs, it's sort of all on them. Um, but, and they usually they have a very short lifespan, but they still do a lot. 
because all of these bees, as they're going around and finding themselves food, are doing something really, really important. They are pollinating our crops. So pollination is what we need to make food. So when we have an apple tree, the apples don't just randomly come on the tree. We actually have pollen from another apple tree that comes and is fed to the flower on our first apple tree. And the first apple tree says, oh, awesome. I have like different types of pollen. I'm gonna make an apple. It's kind of like how like trees have babies or flowers have babies and make seeds. So if a flower wants to kind of continue, it needs to have pollen. And it needs to get that pollen from one flower to another. I see Georgia has a question. Um, What's your question, Georgia? I, I learned this from a show that um, um, the bees take pollen from a male um, tree, flowers, or trees to female. That's right. They take it from a male tree or a flower to a female tree or a flower, and that helps them make the seeds, which is really important. So if you're thinking about like, hmm, does it really matter about pollination? Like how important really is that, Dr. Erica? Maybe apples. That sounds great, but whatever. Everything. Like I want to have chocolate in my life. Chocolate doesn't grow on trees, but cocoa does. Like cocoa, um, what's it called? Like the cocoa pods, they grow on trees. And if we don't have a pollinator, they're not going to keep growing. And I don't know, maybe I like milk. Milk is great because I could take my milk with my chocolate and I could make hot chocolate. Or even better, I could take my milk and make ice cream and then put hot fudge on top. Sounds delicious. Without pollinators, we don't have milk because the milk comes from the cows and you're like, Dr. Erica, cows, last I checked, do not get pollinated. You're totally right. You think you caught me, but you didn't because cows eat grass. Grass needs to get pollinated. So that's kind of important. And we can actually trace back most of our food to pollination. Because pollination is required for all sorts of plants. And then there's a lot of animals that eat those plants. There's other animals that eat those animals. Or we use those animals to make things like milk. And it all goes back to being pollinated. So we really need pollinators. And bees are kind of the best, but not all bees are alike. In fact, the honeybee is not a great pollinator because they're like really precise. They're very clean. They like to do things in a good way. Even bumblebees, bumblebees have like little pollen baskets on their legs and they like go and they're like, oh, I'll take a little bit of pollen and put it in my basket. They go to the next flower like, oh, a little bit more pollen, I'll put it in my basket. And you can actually see it on their legs. They have these cool clumps of pollen on their legs and those are their pollen baskets. Awesome, maybe a little bit better, but there is one bee and it loves pollen so much it literally just like belly flops into the flower. It's like flower? Woohoo! And it flops into it. And, and eat then it. it like rolls around and has a little food. And then it like goes to the next flower and it's like, oh, that one looks pretty. And it flies over and it's like, woohoo! And it flops into the next flower. And guess what? As it flops, a whole bunch of pollen from the first flower falls off. And a whole bunch of flower from the second pollen joins. And it's like, ooh, what about this other one? And it flops into another. It just does a whole bunch of belly flops. And get this, this bee can do as much pollination as a hundred honeybees in the same amount of time. So like one of these bees is a hundred honeybees worth of pollination. That's kind of amazing. And this bee can pollinate 2,000 flowers a day. 2,000. Can we talk about that for a moment? That's a lot of flowers, like a lot of flowers. Kind of shocked by that. I think we have a question. Uh, Venetia is wondering, her rolls are not tight. Is That's that okay. Good? Yeah, we have, look, we, Venetia, we have different sizes. So we have some that are little, we have some that are big, we have some that are medium. And Venetia is actually good to have all different sizes because bees are actually super smart animals and they can recognize, recognize the different shapes and the different sizes of this, and they will be able to know which one will be their house. So they'll be able to decipher like this guy versus that guy. And if we have all different ones, they can look around their house. Just like if we were to like live on a street where every single house looked exactly the same, no numbers, every single mailbox was the same, every single driveway was the same, every single yard was the same. 
it might be hard for us to go home because you have to be like, all right, what are we, the fifth house? And be like, one, two, three. And then somebody's like, mommy, I'm hungry. And you're like, oh, wait, what house was that? Wait, is that three? Is that four? And it'd be hard. But when you have all different color houses, you can be like, oh, no, we're the green house that's next to the blue house. And bees do the same thing. So they might be like, we're the medium house next to the little house that's on top of another little house next to a big house. So different sizes, Venetia, is really good. And isn't that sort of surprising that bees can, like, tell the difference between the different sizes? That's kind of cool. Um, I have some other cool facts, but I want to go back to our super special belly flopping bee. Because that is actually one of the bees that we are making this for today. And it is called a mason bee, which is really cool. The mason bees are amazing pollinators. They belly flop in flowers, which I think kind of sounds like fun. And they're going to build their homes in these tubes that we're making. But the sad thing about honeybees is they have so much fun that they're like kind of done. So the, the or not, did I say honeybees? Yeah, mason, mason bees. The sad thing about the mason bees is they have so much fun that, that they don't go from season to season. So a mason bee is a baby. The mama hat puts the little babies, she'll put them in these tubes and she'll spit a bunch of mud and then put a little teeny tiny baby, pack it with a bunch of food, which is why she has to go visit all the flowers. And then she'll then put in a whole bunch of mud to make a wall. And then she'll put in another little tiny baby and she'll put in more food and then she'll make another wall out of mud and she'll keep doing this all the way. And about, I think she's alive for about 10 weeks maybe. So like after that, she's like, all right, I'm done. And she goes off into the sunset and never to be seen from again. So we have to like do this all of the time, which is kind of sad, but also kind of cool that mason bees do this. Also, that's where mason bees get their name, by making those rooms, by spitting all that mud into the rooms. When people first saw it, they thought of people who laid bricks and did masonry work, which is like work with stone. So they got the name mason bees, which is pretty cool. Um, all right, so let's get some cool facts that you guys might be shocked about. Oh, wait. Oh, before. Just, let's just stock answer paper some questions. Rushing. Stock paper? Like cardstock. Ooh, cardstock might be hard to roll, but if you can roll it, it'll work, sure. Yeah. Even like paper, if you don't want to roll things, paper straws would work too. But you probably don't want to use plastic straws. We want to keep everything as like happy as possible. Um, yeah, so that would, that would work. So, cool facts about bees. And this is not just mason bees. This is like all different types of bees. Because scientists were super interested in bees. One, because our food all relies on it. And two, because why not? Like every scientist finds something they're really interested in. They're like, hmm, I wonder, I wonder about this. Like, I wonder, could a bee tell the difference between me and Isabella? I wonder. In fact, a bee can, which is kind of amazing that a bee can tell the difference between me and Isabella. That's cool. Um, Georgia, can I use a tape, please? And, can I just do this one? They do that by looking at the eyes and the eyebrows and the nose and the mouth, which is all kind of cool. All right, thank you. So bees can tell the difference between people. That's kind of amazing, right? I was not expecting that when I did some research to learn more about bees. But that is like mm, maybe one of the least surprising ones that I found out. No. I know, right? Because that's kind of surprising. I like doing two at a time. So, here's another cool thing about bees. Old bees can revert their brains to being really young. Like, you could be really old, and maybe you're like, where did I put my bee slippers? I can't remember. And then, like, there's little young worker bees, and they're like, oh, you know what? I actually go ride a tricycle every day, and I know exactly where my slippers are. And the old bee is like, huh, I wonder. And the old bee goes to ride the little tricycle and is like, yes, I do feel young. I know exactly where my slippers are. Seriously, this is what happens in bees. Old bees who do things that young bees do make their brain younger. Like, not just hold it at a spot, they make their brain actively younger. That's kind of cool. Like, you would never forget stuff because you would just be like, I need to revert my brain and go ride the tricycle some. So that's pretty cool. I thought that was neat. Like... I don't know, how many species do you know that can like revert their brain? Other than the immortal jellyfish, which doesn't actually have a brain. Does it? I don't think it does. I'm just having a picture of a bee, a bee on a tricycle right now, and he knows. Riding around, around looking for their slippers. <laughs> <laughs>
I'm gonna be the old lady that's like, where are my slippers? I'm already that lady. It's already here. It's, yes, every day. Okay, so not only can bees recognize faces, they can change their brain to being younger if they want to. That's neat. Another interesting thing. So bees go and um, their eyeballs use the sun in the sky to figure out how to navigate. But if it's cloudy out, they're not lost. They actually do something called using a polarized light, which is like taking a whole bunch of light and putting it through a fence so it's all the waves are going the exact same way. And it's kind of cool. Some people might have polarized sunglasses out because um, a lot of sunglasses now are polarized and it does the same thing as like having like a whole bunch of like little tiny gates on your sunglasses. So when you turn it one way, you see something slightly different than if you turn it the other. So if you look at like a digital watch, it will actually go away if you look through it and you spin the digital watch because in some ways the light can get through those little um, fence posts and in other ways it can't, which is kind of cool. So you don't see something and sometimes you do. Pretty neat. Um, but so they can navigate either by the sun or by putting the sun through lots of teeny tiny little fence posts. That's kind of cool. Maybe not that surprising. Maybe it's just cool. Here's the one that I think is surprising. Bees can count. What? I know, right? Bees can count. They can count to four. And if instead of just giving them like sugar water, you give them something that tastes yucky instead of they get the counting wrong, they can count higher, like up to like seven or 10. Bees can count. Can we pause for a moment? Think of a bumblebee. Think of its head, which is like the size of a pea. And inside that head is a brain, and it's gotta do a lot of stuff. It's gotta know to go to pollinating. It's gotta figure out how to navigate. It's gotta know what to do, how to have babies. It's gotta know how to pack that mason wall in. It's gotta know how to build the hexagonal wax structure for its hive. It's gotta do a lot. And it can count. What? I think that's shocking, right? Here is something even more shocking though than bees counting. They can add and subtract. How cool is that? Do they like go to school? No, well we train them. We can train bees to add and subtract. So bees, um, the way they do it is they get, instead of a plus sign, which might be a little tricky for a bee, they use colors, blue if you're gonna add, and yellow if you're going to subtract. And then they could say like, they could put three triangles in blue, and then the B would need to go to the one that's three plus one more. So they'd have to choose a side that's four. And they can choose right more than 50% of the time. They're like a C average student. They're like 75%, right? <laughs> All right, so maybe a C average for a kid doing like three plus one is four is not great, but for a B, like how tiny is a B? It can add. And then if it's in yellow, it knows, oh, those three triangles are in yellow, which means I take one away, so the right answer is two. That's cool. That's cool. Also, bees understand the concept of nothing, so they understand zero. Which is a tough one. Which is tough. That's, like, really tricky. Like, right, when you're thinking of counting, you're thinking of, like, I have one apple, I have another apple, I have another apple, but it actually takes a lot of time to think of, like, none. And bees can, they understand zero. They can understand cool what's missing. What? Wow. Bees can count. Do we have enough rolls yet? I think it's so cool. We'll, worry, we'll find out if we have enough rolls. I think we should keep making rolls as we go. Should we like put them in there and see? We're going to put ours in this one. Oh, can I make it? Yeah. We're going to work on making it. We it's should tape the top like together. We should tape it together here. And this guy, it's got some beautiful holes in it. You might need to hole punch for your hanging string if you need to. Or you could just like wrap it around and then hang it off of something. Mm -hmm. Which is also equally awesome. Yeah, if you're using a plastic container, you can hole punch the container. Mm -hmm. And you can see we have all sorts of beautiful shapes and sizes. Okay, not shapes. They're all pretty round. But all sorts of beautiful sizes, which is pretty fantastic. And what we'll end up doing is we're going to sort of stuff them into here, which is great. And you'll notice that mine does not have a back on it, which is not great because we don't want those parasites to get into the back. And this book actually has this awesome backing template. La! So we'll end up cutting that out and put it on the back so that those nasty little parasites can't get in. Wait, we want the them. back, it's that small? It's going to be that small, so we're going to like, it'll go like this. And then it will fit 
Just like that. I'll put the back. Isabella is going to work on cutting and taping that. Ooh, Georgia's working on something that looks kind of like the same thing. That we could maybe even hang. Super cool. All right, so let's think of some other cool things. We'll take all of them. Hmm. How many bees are in the world? Oh, I don't know how many, like, lots of bees in the world. Maybe some of our kids have some cool yes. bee facts. If you have cool bee facts, please tell us, because bees are amazing. Well, I would take data. Right. Honestly, I'm so impressed by bees. Did not know they could count. Ray Ray had a school. quick question. She yeah. said they rolled all the paper in their book. What Beautiful. to do next? All right. Multiple people have run out of paper. Oh, perfect. All right, so we've, we have run out of paper. Isabella is making sort of if you're going to do it out of a um, book jacket, but let's say you're going to make it out of sort of a can like this. What you're going to do is you're just going to stack them in just like that. And remember, you want to vary sort of shape or not shapes, sizes, so that the bees will be able to recognize which house is theirs. And the nice thing about this is actually this can be housing to a lot of different types of either bees or other nesting animals that can use it. So it won't just be mason bees. In fact, leaf cutter bees will come in a little bit after the mason bees and they make their homes by, instead of spitting mud, they actually go chomp on leaves and spit the leaves as their walls, which is kind of neat. And so you're just gonna stuff it in like this and some of these longer ones that we could cut down so that they're all sort of more of the same size but it's okay if there's some coming out and some not i would worry about this one just because if it were to rain it would get like gross and then it would get all the other ones gross so you do want it to come out a little bit on top of or we could engineer a cool extra roof which would be great so Ray Ray and all of my friends who have gone through and rolled all these rolls, this is your next step, which is really quite easy. Who knew that saving the world from a shortage of hot fudge and ice cream could be as easy as this? Pretty cool, right? Now, when you're done with this, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to tie some string around it hang it on like a tree in a shady area. You probably wanna put a little bit of water around it, just not like in it, but like maybe like a little a bee, um, instead of a bird bath, you should make a little bee bath. That would be super cute. It could be like fairy size. It'd be like a fairy size bee bath, that'd be amazing. So they have a little water and you wanna put it close to some flowers. So if you are like in a cement jungle, this might be a little trickier. If you know where there are some flowers or some flowering trees, you want to put it decently close by because mason bees don't go far. So they might go like a couple hundred yards. So like maybe if you have a house and you put it in your backyard, they might make it to the front yard. Honeybees are different. Honeybees will go up to two miles. So those are like great, awesome, but not mason bees. So our little belly floppers, they like to stick close to home. Maybe because they need a new swimsuit every time they belly flop. Who knows? Um, so you want to put it near some flowers that they will enjoy. And then what's going to happen is they, over the course of like the next few months, you'll get some things that build their nests in here or their hives in here. And these will overwinter. So that means that they're going to hibernate. The little tiny baby mason bees sit in their nice little cozy room with all of their food and all they do is like nom 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 and they get nice and big and fat nom 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 all through the winter like oh i'm tired and they keep eating and then sort of towards springtime as it gets warmer they will start to come out and in fact the bees in the front will come out first and you might be like dr erica how do they know that the bees are in the front like how do they know what room they got when their mama put them in there the mom actually gets to choose if the bee is going to be a boy or a girl and the boy bees they take less time so they will actually come out first so what she'll do is she'll put all of her little girl babies in the back and the boy babies in the front and then the boys start to come out and then a few days later, like a week later, the girls start to come out. So you want to make sure that we overwinter this in a place where it's not going to freeze. Because while they're in a nice cozy home with lots of food and they have this great room that their mama built them, it won't help if it's frozen. 
So what you could do is at the end of the summer, you can put this in your garage and let it hang out. Nice, dry, cool environment away from mice or anything else that might want to eat it. And then sort of come like March-ish, you can put it back out and then you'll see them starting to grow and you would want to make another one of these. You could still use the plastic, but you would want to make new loops, which is not too hard. Um, to put it in and that helps to make sure that you don't get any sort of disease or any parasites or pests that can get in there and then they just decide that they're going to eat it all day long. Um, and if you find you don't get too many this year, you could retry next year and actually get yourself, you can buy mason bees, you can buy like bundles of these that have the babies in it already at a garden store. So you can sort of pre-start it. And then they'll keep going and you'll get all of this great pollination and you will help the world. Like you will truly help the world because our bees are in a massive decline right now and we don't necessarily know all of the reasons why. So we need to make sure we help them as much as we can. And that means giving them a good home, giving them great food to eat like flowers, um, giving them clean water, which really, I mean, is just a bee bath and also not using pesticides on our garden. In fact, this book has a lot of really cool ideas on what you can do naturally to create, to prevent things like aphids or get rid of some weeds while also protecting our bee friends and not hurting them. Because one big thing that is hurting bees are the pesticides that we spray on crop fields and whatnot. So yeah, this is what you'll do when you get this all done. It doesn't have to be stuffed super tight, like this would be totally fine. And then we'll put the string and we'll hang it and then in a few months we'll come back and we'll just help it make sure it gets through the winter so that it doesn't freeze. And then we're good. Yeah. We'll have them next season. It doesn't also, fit. be careful buying your plants from big hardware stores mm. because they often have the pesticides baked into the plants. Ooh, so I didn't know about this. Watch out, even your grocery store sometimes in order Ooh. to preserve their plants they have they put a bunch of pesticides, yeah, and the bees don't like it. They go belly flopping that, and they're like, mmm, delicious, and they're like, ew, that tasted a little funny. Did I just eat something gross? And they're like, oh, I don't feel so good, and their tummy's hurt, and they're like, ugh. We don't want to do that. We want to make sure that all the pollen they eat is yummy and delicious so they can create more pollen and make our gardens even more amazing than they are. Yeah. All right, so I think we should head over into Zoom so we can see the fun beehives that our friends are making. If you're just joining us for the talk, awesome, you can feel free to email us at drerica at rosyresearch.com any of the photos of you guys working or your final products if you want to be in the pre-show. Um, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, our Facebook, our Instagram, and if you want to support us, it starts at a dollar a week, which is like a coffee a month, at patreon.com slash rosyresearch. And I look forward to seeing all of our creations. We'll see you guys tomorrow with Hilba. We turn into entomologists and do a fun little science experiment. We'll see you later. Have a good one. Oh, Mama. Georgia.